I'd like to share two more discoveries that I made about 30 years ago in the early 1980s. I found two more pertinent um, fascinations or order within the chaos of Magic Square. So we're going to write this Magic Square on the board. So you can see this is like a tic-tac-toe game, wooden puzzle. And you've got 618753294. So I'm going to draw that on the board. And we're going to um, convert the art, the numbers, into art. So, so, so we've got a three by three frame of nine cells. That's a cell. And we notice that when we write 618, it's actually got to do with the phi ratio. Phi is 0.618 or 1.618. So it's interesting that the top line of the magic square, which adds up to 15, is related to the golden ratio, 618. And five is always in the middle, 753. If we didn't have five, we could put the five-pointed star here because that's part of the discovery that I'm going to show you, 753. 294. In ancient Arabian times, they always had the central cell of five as an empty square because the, the empty cell represented the void, the bindu, the God space, the holy space. So magic squares is where I started my research from. So um, early in 1980s, I studied this book called Magic Squares and Cubes by W.S. Andrews. And when you flick through this book, it was just full of thousands of types of squares, Melancholia by Dura, Examination, Atomic Structures, beautiful stuff. And this inspired my creativity um, to get access to other things like prime numbers and Fibonacci sequences. So magic squares are the key to atomic structure. So here we have the first primal magic square. And what I've done is I'm going to join a line. We know that it all adds up to 15, the columns, rows and diagonals all add up to 15. But I'm going to join a line from 1 to 2 to 3. So 1 to, one to 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we often, we can draw the, the 9 back to the 1, but I'm not going to draw it now. I'm going to shade, I'm going to take this triangle here. This is an elongated isosceles triangle. And you can see that this triangle here, when you analyze the mathematics of it, it's a golden triangle because if this is one, this is phi, and it happens to be the same as when we when we draw a five-pointed star, there's five outer triangles, and this shape here is the same as this one here. So to prove that you'd have to do a bit of graph work and paperwork and square roots and algebra. But I'm just, just the, the way to get it, the way, if you look at this here, you can see, see these two squares in here? There's, there's a key of mathematics in those double squares because when we take a square, which is one by one and another square, we end up with a rectangle that's two by one. So that distance is two. Pythagoras' theorem says 1 squared plus 2 squared equals 5. So this distance here, which I'll do in red, this distance here is called the square root of 5. So 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by the 2 equals 1.618. So that's called the phi ratio. And the 0.618, this bit here, 618, that's called phi. We have to give that a name. One's a macro and one's a micro, phi and phi. So there's a lot of mathematics to prove that when you analyze all this, when you analyze all of this, there's the root five harmonics embedded in the nine points that make up the nine numbers of the magic square. So we'll call that, um, that's discovery number one. Um, and it's, it may appear really simple, but what it's showing is that these first primal nine numbers that are the, is the first harmonic in the universe where everything adds up to the same and yet it, it's containing in its atomic structure the golden ratio the harmonics of the pentacle this is the shape of every protein in your body so these are life-giving mathematical codes and i love it because when you teach this to children they see that there's an order amongst amidst the random chaos that you see you look at that square and you think it's random but we can show that it's full of um harmonics so we could draw that square on top of itself i could turn these numbers around and i could go 
in another color, maybe blue, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and back to where I started from. So when children start superimposing the magic squares, it, it looks amazing. They get really in, in busy with it. And when we do it four times, we've done it twice, but when we do it four times, we end up with this. So when we draw this magic square four times, we end up with an eight-pointed star. And I want you to observe these golden triangles. So what I drew here, the golden triangle here, you can see that there's eight actual golden triangles in this logo that I use because it's all based on the harmonics of the root five principle. So um, we can see here it's based on those numbers, 618753294. Now, what I want to show you is the second part of the discovery is that I'm going to take another magic square, the next one in order. This is order number three. Order number four is a four by four magic square where all the columns and rows add up to 34 diagonals, center numbers, corner numbers, opposite pairs. It's really special, right? We're not going to draw it and I haven't put it on the board. I just wanted to show you that when we take the next completely different set of numbers, um, we get a pattern. So, so here's those numbers here. There's the magic square of four. Now, when I join a line from one to two to three, I end up with this pattern. I pick up this pattern and superimpose it at another angle at 90 degrees. I get this pattern here. And now if I was to put another square over the square, like a diamond over the original square, I would have drawn this original pattern here um, four times. So this is the pattern you get here when it's drawn four times. And when you color it in, you end up with this geometry here. Now, the, you might say, what's the connection between this magic square of four by four rotated four times and the three by three rotated four times? So I want you to take a look at this magic square here. See this golden star? It's identical to the golden star here of the three. So what we're understanding is that the four by four magic square has genetically inherited the memory or the data of the three by three into its heart. It's it's taken the previous knowledge of the three by three and absorbed it into the heart of its own mandala universe. So that's uh, quite interesting. And I um, just wanted to show you that I recorded this information in 1990. I put my first book out on magic squares. It was called Harmony Squares. And you can see here that, you can see here that, um, um, you can see here that I showed the magic square 618, I drew it, and there's the golden triangle, and there's more references to this magic square of four and the pentagram. But um, what I was trying to say is that from starting from nine numbers, nine is the key, it opens up the universal knowledge of the golden uh, ratio and the fractal harmonics of the pentacle. So I just wanted to um, share with you the... Um, these exquisite patterns of the four by four so you can see the three by three within the four by four there and here's another version here the three by three is in the four so my theory is that from the one becomes the two the three becomes the four and the four becomes the five and the, that is why without five in the middle we can't create any of this universal order five five fingers five toes five is the key to all the universal knowledge and that's why when we understand these magic squares, when the, th when the three is within the four, it starts to make the bells ring. You can see that when children turn numbers into pictures, it opens up a door.